All right, so we're going to be looking at unit two today for biology. Okay. Uh, remember that the way you study for biology is going to be considerably different than the way you will study for chemistry and physics. Okay. Chemistry and physics are going to be all about practicing your skills, right? Uh, writing, predicting the products of a chemical reaction and all that kind of stuff, like actually doing those things. Whereas with biology, it's much more about uh, reading your notes, okay? knowing the information so that you can apply it to a contextual example. All right, so you remember that on your unit exam, you had questions that you know had a picture of a tree and it gave you a situation about that tree. It was the tree had been knocked over by a landslide early in its life and it now looked like this. What was the main reason for it? Now that tree was out on the edge of a cliff all by itself, okay? The only reason it would have grown bent and straight back up would have been because of gravity, geotropism. Okay? And then you needed to explain how geotropism happened. So when you're studying, know that that's the kind of question you're gonna get. You're not only gonna to need to know what something is, but you're gonna to have to explain how it fits in that situation, okay? Especially in regards to cellular transport, okay? Um, plant transport, plant growth and development, especially those things, right? Um, parts of the cell, yeah, that's important, uh, but that's more memorization. There is a diagram of the cell on the final exam, okay? Uh, it's in the multiple choice, but um, you still need to know what the parts of the cell are and what they do. Okay, um, in order to answer those questions. Okay, so we started out with cell theory. Okay, um, most of the cell theory stuff is tested in the multiple choice. Okay, so um, you know the parts of the cell theory. All organisms are made of cells. Okay, cells carry out the basic functions of an organism, and cells reproduce by splitting in half. They are not created. Um, now I have there. Uh, circled in red, WR, and then an arrow that says basic functions. That's written response. That whole second point about cells carrying out the basic functions was one of the big themes in unit two. It applied when we were talking about cells, and it also applied when we were talking about multicellular organisms. And if you recall, I said that's one of those things that you can work into just about any answer about biology okay is that cells carry out the basic functions and that means this 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 or this it can apply to a lot of different situations so it's one you want to always have kind of in the toolbox because okay? it's one that you can use a lot okay questions on what will be on for cell theory okay after cell theory then we we talked about modes of nutrition Okay, that would be photoautotrophs and chemoheterotrophs, right? Those organisms get their energy differently. Photoautotrophs use photosynthesis, okay? They use light and carbon dioxide and water to make sugar, whereas a chemoheterotroph consumes other organisms as a source of energy. That results in their cells looking quite different. And that's where kind of we focused on here. The modes of nutrition were what influenced cellular structural differences between plants and animals. Okay. Some of those big differences being that plant cells had cell walls and they had chloroplasts and they had water vacuoles okay, in order to help them with what they do. That is their um, not mobile, okay? they have to be rigid, they have to support their leaves, they have to be able to carry out photosynthesis, that kind of thing. Whereas for animals, they didn't have cell walls because they needed to be flexible and mobile. Okay? They didn't need uh, chloroplasts because they consumed other organisms for energy, so they needed lysosomes to digest them, all of that kind of stuff. That's stuff you're gonna need to review okay? so that you know it, uh, and then you can explain it if a question asks you about okay, um, cellular structural differences. Now, most of this is going to be in the multiple choice. Okay, Most of the stuff about modes of nutrition is going to be in the multiple choice, including the labeling of the cell diagram. Okay, This was the lesson where I actually gave you the cell diagrams and we went through all the parts of the cell. So cell diagrams, label and give the function because that was part of that lesson there. Okay, and then we talked about the functions of the cell parts, the organelles okay, in lesson five. Lesson five was the biggest lesson in the unit because we went over all the functions of the cell and we went over cellular transport. Okay. 
Okay, so cell function and transport, that was lesson five, so you might want to make a note of that. Okay, there's some multiple choice about that, but way more of it greater than. Okay, so way more in the written response about cell transport. If you recall, more than half of the marks on your unit exam in the written response had at least something to do with cell transport, even when it was talking about transport in plants. It was still osmosis. It was just cellular transport principle. So make sure you know the big three. Okay, The big three methods of cell transport, that is osmosis, okay? diffusion, and active transport. Okay? Um, remember that diffusion is that natural tendency of materials to move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration or down their gradient. Okay. Um, we talked about how that's kind of, you know, like if somebody farts, it's really concentrated when they're right next to them, but it kind of dissipates and pretty soon you don't even notice it. Okay. That's diffusion. Okay. It's just moving from an area of high concentration to low concentration. Um, with osmosis, osmosis moves only what? Water. That's the key thing we have to remember about osmosis. It only moves water and it moves it across a membrane in order to balance salt concentrations. Okay, the example on your unit exam was the slug vacation disaster cartoon. Okay, they were headed to the Great Salt Lake and you had to tell me what was going to happen. Well, they go into the Great Salt Lake, it's very salty. The salt will draw the water out of this out of the slugs through their through their membrane by osmosis, causing them to shrivel up and die. Okay, things like that. That's a contextual question about a topic you know. So you tell me, here's osmosis, here's how it works. Here's how it applies to this situation. Okay, that's basically every question you're going to get in biology. Okay, here's a context. Tell me what you know. Tell me how it fits. Okay, so uh, then we talked about cell size and transport. We did that cube activity, right, where we had the the um, micro, macro, and multi micro, and we looked at how um, you know if cells get really big. Their surface area to volume ratio gets really out of whack. Okay, um, that makes it difficult for them to not only acquire materials but to move them by what process? Diffusion, right? Okay. The reason cells don't get very big is because diffusion doesn't work well over large distances. Okay, it's not very fast. It's not targeted. Okay, and that's not good over long distances. Okay. Um, so we need to make sure we understand how those two concepts go together. Cell size, diffusion, okay, how do they go together? You had a question on that on the unit exam, okay, it was the enterprise question, okay, the Starship Enterprise question, okay, where I asked you, could an amoeba this big actually exist? And that was where you're supposed to tell me, no, it can't, okay, because it simply wouldn't be able to use diffusion effectively to transport materials. Okay. Um, so that's going to be written response, okay? Make sure you know diffusion, but also obviously on the unit exam, more of the questions were on osmosis than on diffusion, okay? Now, with active transport, because we haven't talked about that yet, okay? How is active transport different than the other two? It uses energy, it's active. The other two are passive, they just happen. The cell can't control them, but it can use them, okay? Um, so remember that active transport is going to use energy and it's going to pump materials again across the membrane, but now from low concentration to high concentration. It's going to, that's why it uses energy. It's like pumping water uphill, okay? It goes against the natural flow, so it has to um, put energy in for that. Okay. Then we talked about multicellularity, okay? And we talked about um, if you're multicellular, you have specialization, okay? That is within, um, within the organism, there are cells that do certain jobs or groups of cells that do certain jobs, okay? Their structure is different than other cells within that organism, okay? And that's what helps it to do things more efficiently than a single cell that has to do everything, right? And that goes back again. If I asked you a question about specialization, is that a question where you might be able to work in second point in the cell theory? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, if you're talking about, about a multicellular organism having specialization, you can say, you know, cells carry out the basic functions of the organism, but in specialization, they might be really good at this function. Okay? There's a way to work it in. All right? That's the kind of thing that takes you from four out of five to five out of five. 
on a biology question. Okay, that thoroughness of your answer, okay, that's showing Mr. Coder, I'm making connections between things that are in different parts of this unit. I'm tying concepts together. That's abstract thought. Okay, that's the kind of thing we want to see okay, on a final exam. And I understand how different ideas in the whole course go together. All right, and we talked about how to be multicellular, you had to be eukaryotic, okay? Eukaryotic cells are like ours. They have compartmentalization. That is, they have the different organelles, the different little rooms that do everything, okay? A prokaryotic cell is like a bacteria and everything has to happen in one spot. Those are not going to become specialized. Okay, yeah, so Liam, that compartmentalization, that's what that word is. You couldn't read it. My, my writing is so bad. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, number seven. Okay. Then we started talking about plant structure. Plants were our example of a multicellular organism where we saw all the different cellular transport principles. Okay. Um, so we wanted to you know, show with plants that, yes, the same cellular transport principles that go on okay, in a cell are used by a plant. Specifically, which one? And we did a lab on this, we cut the roots off and we proved that, yeah, it's that the force comes from the leaves, but the force is driven by what process? Osmosis, okay, as water evaporates from the leaves, okay, then it, the salts get left behind, okay, there's a high salt concentration, water moves towards the high salt concentration by osmosis because it's a polar molecule, okay, it pulls on the other uh, water molecules, pulling them off the plant, okay, that was what the whole purpose of that lab was, okay, so make sure you understand how plants work, roots, leaves, okay, but specifically, okay, plant transport as well as the leaf layers, and the leaf layers are important because they tie back into this. Okay, they are an example of specialization. Okay, and on your unit exam, that was the question you got. I put a diagram of the layers of the leaf and asked you to explain that. Okay, so there's your opportunity to say, well, these cells are different. Here's some cells that do this job. Here's some cells that do this job. You'll see that these ones have this in them or these ones don't. Okay, and you're just explaining that through. Okay, so expect again, you're probably going to be asked something similar to that. Okay, so definitely know the leaf layers. Okay, the stomates are important. Okay, they play a role in controlling water loss. Okay, they also use osmosis. Okay, they're specialized cells okay? using a cell transport process to do a job. Okay, remember how they work. That is, as the water evaporates and the salt gets left behind, okay, the water can be drawn out of those guard cells and it changes their shape and closes the stomate, preventing any more evaporation, right? So a, another example of a specialized cell doing a job. Okay, and then we talked about, again, plant transport, okay? N you definitely need to know phloem and xylem, okay? Remember the phloem is what transports the sugars from the leaves to the roots by gravity. The xylem transports water from the roots to the leaves using osmotic pulling force and the polar nature of water, Okay, and all of that kind of stuff. Okay, so make sure you've reviewed that. That will definitely be on the exam, okay, in the written response, okay, as well as a few multiple choice questions about it as well. Okay. Osmotic pressure. I think that was what that was supposed to say, but I think I erased part of it. Okay, so yeah, osmotic uh, pulling force there. That was the whole purpose of that lab. Okay, generally, guys, if it's something we spent a couple of classes on and a, and a lab, you can guarantee it's on the final. Okay, if we spent enough, if it was worth doing a lab about, it's something that's pretty important. Okay, and then we had plant growth and development after that. This is where we talked about the plant hormones. Okay, um, there's there were a lot of diagrams in the multiple choice and the written response of your unit exam. The same is true for your final. It's printed in color. There are pictures, okay, uh, and the pictures are there to help you, okay. But a lot of them have to do with plant growth and development, okay. So knowing like you know your auxins and your cytokinins and your gibberellins, ethylene, okay, 
abscisic acid. Uh, in fact, one of your questions in the written response on your unit exam was about abscisic acid. I showed you the two different plants. One had gone dormant because of drought. The other had gone dormant because of winter. Okay, that was abscisic acid causing the disruption of chlorophyll. Okay, those kind of things. So certainly know how they all work. Okay, because if there's a multiple choice question, you can recognize it or be able to explain it in a in a contextual question. Okay, and that's what you were asked to do on your. Um, unit exam okay again that question with the tree out on the cliff okay that one was plant growth and development you had to work in okay you had to talk about how auxins work and how they're always responsible for tropisms okay how tropisms work okay one side of the plant grows faster than the other because auxins get secreted to that side more so it grows faster okay those kind of things need to be explained okay so the hormones we went over like we said auxins gibberin gibberellin cytokinins abscisic acid and ethylene okay that'll mostly be multiple choice Right, then we got tropisms. Okay, I've got oxen circled here with an arrow pointing back to that thing. These two things are related. Okay, make sure you know how they're related. And we talked about phototropism, geotropism, and thigmotropism. Okay, those were the three. Geo is for gravity, photo is for light, thigmo is for touch. And then make sure you understand that all tropisms are differential rates of growth. They're caused by differential rates of growth. That's that auxins to one side, not to the other okay, idea. Okay, so um, in general, I think I told you this the other day, but in general, okay, um, 15 written response questions for a total of 87 marks. Okay, I did, I think I'm pretty sure I told you that last week, but just a reminder, there's 15 written response questions worth 87 marks. But remember that some of those are things like, you know, uh, you've got a bunch of four mark questions in chemistry, right? And you got a bunch of these things. So it, it, it sounds like a lot, but really there, I give marks for just about anything, right? When you guys know that if you're showing your work, you're going to get marks for it. Okay. Uh, so make sure that you're doing that okay, on the exam as you go along. Okay. Uh, all, other things to remember, okay, you might be asked about estimating the size of an object through a microscope. Okay. That was something we had to do. Okay. It'd be pretty easy to have a multiple choice question with just a picture I've taken through the microscope and say, this was on high power where the field of view is 400 micrometers. How big is it? Okay. Uh, things like that. All right, questions from you guys. What kind of things you want me to go over in a bit more detail or cover? I mean, really with biology guys, it's just a lot of reading and reviewing, okay? Reading, reviewing, and uh, another good thing to do when you're studying for biology is to kind of make jot notes. Okay, you already have your notes package, but it's always a good idea to kind of summarize that into your own words a bit, okay, so that it makes sense to you. If you put it in your own words, then you've had to process it, okay, and the more you process it, the more likely you are to remember it, okay. Uh, some people do like um, recipe cards, like cue card kind of things, okay, uh, you know, rephrasing stuff or whatever, that flashcard kind of things, that's fine, okay. Those are all good if that's what works for you. Um, but those are those are good strategies to use, okay, for certain. Or again, I've told you kind of how, in what way I'm going to ask some of these questions, like contextual kind of questions. See if you can make some up on your own. Okay? If you can make up a question about a topic, then you understand it pretty well. Okay, so kind of coming up with some of your own types of questions based on what you know I might ask is a good idea. Then write your answer out. Um, I forget where I was going with that train of thought. I totally lost it. Anyway, um, so those are some strategies there for that. Um, and I put, remember, I put the review package up on Google Classroom last week. Okay, so you have that to look through and work through. And there's some old exam questions in there and some suggested activities and things like that for getting ready. Right. Um, 
I'm going to give you guys a little bit of time just to kind of go through your biology stuff and see if any more questions come up. And then I might move into physics even today, okay? Because I think we'll probably have more questions on that, okay, or more things to ask. So uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of time here to go through your notes, go through that, that review package. I'll put it up on the board here, but focusing on biology. Hopefully some questions come up and I'll answer them. Okay? If not, then after a little while, I'll start reviewing physics.